alaykum everyone. We're unfortunately going through a very deadly virus that has never occurred this widely before. Due to the pandemic, everywhere around the world, in every different country, we're witnessing the rise of shrieks and bellows, and the falls of trees that are darkening the skies, even in the brightest days. In the meantime of following the daily news, are expanding the pain in our hearts and make us gather in one another's prayers and du'as, a guest knocked our doors, Ramadan. The one that enlightens our dunya and akhirah, shines our way, heals our physical and spiritual illnesses. The one that plants seeds of hope in our hearts and the one month that the Holy Book Quran Kareem has been gifted to us, the humanity, Ramadan has finally arrived. Are you ready to welcome the month with an informative program that will not only interest adults, but also the kids? Our program this year will consist of different sections. The section of the Holy Book Quran Kareem, followed by Tasbihat, that will purify our hearts. Sufi music that will calm our souls. And what else? A surprise corner. Arts and crafts for our kids filled with creative Ramadan decorations. And then we will have a speaker corner with honorable guests from all around the world, mediated by Mr. Fahmi Kala. Next, we will have delicious iftar recipes corner. And lastly, a surprise series of heartwarming storytellings that will appear time to time. Please let's stay at home and embrace Ramadan together. May Allah accept our prayers and purify our hearts. Let's start. وكان تقيا 
وبرا بوالديه ولم يكن جبارا عصيا وبرا بوالديه ولم يكن جبارا عصيا وسلام عليه يوم ولد ويوم يموت ويوم يبعث حيا يا جميل يا الله يا قريب يا الله يا مجيب يا الله يا حبيب يا الله يا رؤوف يا الله يا عطوف يا الله يا معروف يا الله يا لطيف يا الله يا عظيم يا الله يا حنان يا الله يا منان يا الله يا ديان يا الله يا سبحان يا الله يا أمان يا الله يا برهان يا الله يا سلطان يا الله يا مستعان يا الله يا محسن يا الله يا متعال يا الله يا رحمن يا الله يا رحيم يا الله يا كريم يا الله يا مجيد يا الله يا فرد يا الله يا وتر يا الله يا أحد يا الله يا صمد يا الله يا محمود يا الله يا صادق الوعد يا الله يا علي يا الله يا غني يا الله يا شافي يا الله يا كافي يا الله يا معافي يا الله يا باقي يا الله يا هادي يا الله يا قادر يا الله يا ساتر يا الله يا قهار يا الله يا جبار يا الله يا غفار يا الله يا فتاح يا الله Hey, Sergio, can I get a little water on this tree? Thank you. Are you sure? Yeah, Dad, I just checked online. I'm at the computer. Well, is it 19 days exactly? Well, it says between 13 and 19. <sighs> okay. Am I going to be able to do this on my own? Or will I need help? Well, get help. Maybe an expert. All right. Okay. Thanks. Stop, boss. Hey, can, can you uh, bring me the crane? Yeah. Thanks. Eddie, bring that crane. Dad, look, I found a great website. If they are not big enough, you should wait at least for 10 days. Okay. Did you get it? Thank you. Bye. Hey, 
Yeah, that's it. This tree is staying right where it is for the next month. That's a wrap for today. Okay, guys, come on. Thank Let's you. Let's go. Let's call it a day. Miss Emily, I have to hold off on the sale of this red shanks tree. What do you mean? Huh. Aren't those the only red shanks trees you guys have? Yes, it is. I'm sorry about it. I have an opening at my house, so you need to get me those red shanks trees. I know, but I can't sell this tree. You know what? This is absolute nonsense. Cancel the rest of the delivery. All 18 trees. As you wish. our kids who cannot go outside to the parks to play games and are locked down in houses because of the COVID-19 and we wanted to cheer them up. Ramadan is special not only for adults but also for the kids. This Ramadan, let's let our kids decorate our homes. This year, in Kids Corner, we have prepared creative ways to teach our kids the names of Allah. Today, we will be starting with the name al razaq for talented heads. It's time for Arts and Craft Corner. Let's see.
invited honorable guests and asked them thought-provoking and intriguing questions. In this corner, our precious guests, pandemic and Ramadan evaluations, along with recommendations, will be with you. Let's see what's happening. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome everyone to Embracing Ramadan's Speaker's Corner. Millions of Muslims are joining in fasting for Ramadan all over the world, but different than usual. Dr. Katri Block joined us today. She is a director of research at the Tessalite Institute, professor of political science at the University of Toronto. We will talk about Muslims in North America in the spirit of Ramadan. Welcome, Dr. Katrin Block. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Ramadan Mubarak. I have Sister Esma Bostash also host the program. Welcome, Esma. Thank you so much. Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. So how has the pandemic affected your daily life, Dr. Katrin Block? I'm quite used to working from home. I've been working from home ever since I did my PhD, actually. The rhythm of life has changed, of course, because now my husband and all the kids are home because of the lockdown. So the daily life, I don't have to get up in the morning and help the kids get to school, make their lunches and things, that's changed. Now, of course, the focus has shifted to trying to pass on the skills I've learned about working at home, like time management, work plans, self-discipline, um, goal setting. So I'm trying to help the kids learn those activities so they don't, it's, it's kind of like a weird vacation, the lockdown. So we have to try to help them not be in vacation mode. That's the hardest challenge uh, right now. So for me, it hasn't been a lot of change. So you truly work towards bringing Muslim voices to the force. So as a person who has been researching on Islamophobia, marginalization, negative or orientalist stereotyping of Muslims, what do you think about today's situation is? Do you think there is any development or what kind of observations do you have on the development of specifically uh, women, Muslim women, of Canadian Muslim women. Hmm. So since I became Muslim in 1994, of course, women have the same kind of life cycle that hasn't really changed. You know, there's youth, adulthood, marriage, kids, going into senior, senior lifestyle. So all of that is fairly similar. What I've seen over the years, of course, Canadian Muslims are a very young population, about half are under 40. So an increase in the numbers of young women who are pursuing an education and participating not just in mosque activities, but also in activities with non-Muslim organizations. So I've seen a real growth in young women who are very educated, very articulate, very intelligent, very uh, confident about being Muslim, about being Canadian, about their identities and what they can contribute to the wider society. And it really is very inspiring to me. I get a lot of inspiration when I look around and see how many young women are actively involved in trying to better their communities. How are the young North American Muslims reclaiming their identity? So as I just said about the young women, I think that ap applies across the board also to the young men. I see a great amount of energy. The youth are full of energy and commitment and drive and zeal and they are confident not only about being Muslim, but also about claiming their identity as a Canadian or as, a, as an American. Most of them are quite comfortable with this sense of being both. They don't have a sense of a conflicted identity, and it's giving them drive and energy and motivation. And I said before with the young women, it's true also of the young men, not only do we see them involved in the, in the mosque activities and Muslim organizations, but also in non-Muslim organizations. I also see an expansion in the kinds of careers that they're looking into. We know that there are those jokes about Muslims who become doctors and engineers, and of course we need doctors and engineers, but there has been over the last decade a movement into new areas like law, media, advocacy, social work. So a lot of young people are, are seeing needs all, all around society and are devoting themselves to expanding the horizons in that way. So that's on the positive side. We do know, of course, by the, st the statistical surveys that get done, that there are other young people who are struggling with their identity. We know that there's a rise in atheism amongst the youth, in the numbers of youth leaving Islam. The last study I saw was about 23% have left the faith by the time they become adult, which is 
perfectly in line uh, with other religions, by the way. So it's not just an Islam thing, it's a Muslim, it's a faith thing in general. So we know that they're facing doubts about Islam. They see, you know, Muslims committing violence. They see patriarchy in the home. This makes them doubt the faith. They also faced with racism and Islamophobia on a daily basis, a sense of um, doubt about freedom of expression, of, of being strong, of those other young people who I mentioned about being confident about being Muslims. And there, there are others who don't feel confident. So there are identity issues. Some of them try to hide being Muslim. They leave the faith or they change their name. So I think we have these two poles, the very inspiring and exciting, confident, motivated people and the other people who are struggling. What will be your suggestions to the Muslim community to take position against xenophobia in the spirit of Ramadan? So we need our community organizations to issue statements condemning Islamophobia and xenophobia. And we have seen in Canada a organization, National Council of Canadian Muslims, putting out statement condemning the anti-Chinese xenophobia that has arisen with the pandemic. And this is very important because Islam doesn't teach hatred towards others. It, it teaches uh, interfaith harmony towards others. I think uh, that's an important and necessary thing. But the, there is something we can all do as individuals in our own little circles is if we're part of a conversation with a family or a friend or a co-worker and we hear them say something uh, xenophobic or something's hurting or insulting another ethnic group or another faith group that we should speak up and tell them that's not right. I know that it's a really hard thing to do. It's actually really easy to release a press release, uh, but it's a really, really hard thing to tell a family or a friend person that this is not the right statement, that you shouldn't be talking like that about others. But I think it's a contribution that we can all make in our individual circles. And it's a very, very important contribution. We need the leadership doing it, but also at the grassroots level, which is the harder level. It's something that we can all be doing. It's a contribution we can all make. Dr. Catherine Block join us today. Stay tuned and be safe. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum. I have a question for all of you. Why do we as Muslims doing Ramadan end up hungry, tired, frustrated, even angry at the end of each day of our fasting? Why is it that we don't feel spiritually motivated, energized, more vibrant? Why is that that most of us find it tired, almost tiring as the day goes on? And why is it that Ramadan becomes, for most of us anyways, an unproductive time of the month, or the year rather, I should say? I have three suggestions. Number one, I think we eat the wrong foods and we unfortunately eat more than we should. Number two, I think we don't manage our sleep well. And number three, I don't think we really understand the concept of exercise or physical mobility during this month because a lot of people say, well, I'm so tired. How can I be expected to exercise, etc." In these series of talks that I'm going to inshallah be presenting during Ramadan, I'm going to encourage all of you and myself to really have a new Ramadan, a Ramadan that really activates us. It really motivates us. It makes us more energized. It makes us more powerful in terms of our ability to obey Allah and his messenger. How do we do that? We'll talk about those three aspects. One is we're going to talk about food. How is food to be and what is the type of food that should be eaten and how much should be eaten approximately. We're going to talk about sleep hygiene. How is sleep to be managed so that we don't become so tired that our late part of the day is effectively useless or for some of us the early part is useless as well. And lastly, how do we manage movement? What kind of things can we do that encourage us to actually stay motivated despite the fact that we are relatively energy depleted? Inshallah, I hope that we can all uh, learn in this month that we in fact have a wonderful opportunity to become better people, better Muslims, better neighbors, better fathers, better everything, Inshallah. Why? Because we finally understand the focus of Ramadan is to improve our status with God. It's not to be thinking of ourselves as people who are deprived, 
but as people who are actually enriched, empowered, blessed, gifted. I think when you when you think when you change the way you think, when you use the uh, when you change the words that you're using to describe yourself during Ramadan, you actually change the way you feel about it. And me and you, inshallah, will become then more, as I say, uh, people who are role models for others to say, how can these individuals are not eating, not drinking, not doing any of the things that most people associate with normalcy. How are they so happy? How are they so energized? How are they so productive? Inshallah, I hope that you will join me in the series to follow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Eat and drink, but waste not by excess. For Allah loves not the wasters. Surah Arafah, verse 31. Let's all move on to learning and preparing our delicious Ramadan recipe. شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يذل من وليت ولا يعز من عاديت ولك الحمد على ما قضيت تباركت اللهم ربنا وتعاليت لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك 
والعصمة من كل ذنب والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا حاجة هي لك رضا إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كاشف الغم مفرج الهم مجيب دعوة المضطرين إذا دعوك رحمن الدنيا والآخرة ورحيمهما فارحمنا في حاجتنا هذه بقضائها ونجاحها رحمة تغنينا بها عن رحمة من سواك اللهم إنا نسألك ونتوجه إليك بنبيك محمد النبي الرحمة يا محمد إنا نتوجه بك إلى ربنا في حاجتنا هذه لتخضى لنا اللهم فشفعه فينا اللهم رب الناس مذهب البأس اشف أنت الشافي لا شافي إلا أنت شفاء لا يغادر سقما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام بسم الله الكبير أعوذ بالله العظيم من شر كل عرق النار ومن شر حر النار Welcome Ramadan. Welcome with the hopes you filled our hearts with. With the baraka you filled our tables with. And with the lights you filled our nights with. We are embracing you from all around the world, from different places, yet with similar duas. May this Ramadan be the best one yet for all of us. Stay at home and please like and subscribe. Continue watching us and see you tomorrow.